Hey guys and welcome, Sean Blackford bringing you a quick review today, a Blu-ray review of Night of Champions to be precise. Uh, this is of course a European exclusive brought to you by Silvision. I'm delighted to bring you this, I'm delighted to bring you all the Blu-ray reviews. You know, it's such a great thing as a collector to be able to get my hands on these relatively easy. Um, of course, as I said before, this is an exclusive thing to Europe. And yeah, uh, Night of Champions, as you can see here was a, a standard card for 2011. I do actually believe that 2011 has been a great year for pay-per-views, you know, and uh, having them on Blu-ray just adds to the greatness, if you like. Um, Night of Champions is, of course, a pay-per-view where all the championships are defended on one night, the September pay-per-view. Um, it's not one of my favorite pay-per-views. I never really liked it. I, I don't know why. I just never think one stands out that well. Uh, I think Orton's title win st stood out a bit last year because of how much the guy was over and ready for it. But yeah, um, this pair of view is uh, good for a few things. We had of course Alberto Del Rio defending his WWE Championship on pay per view for the first time against John Cena. Of course Del Rio cashed in his money in the bank the month before to uh, win the title from CM Punk. Uh, this, year, this month he would def have his first title defence against John Cena. Um, I'd say that was a great um, encounter for these two, you know, John Cena's never faced Del Rio before, so it's somewhat fresh for John Cena to get his teeth into. Of course, Del Rio was now in the uh, limelight and uh, very much focused on as a main eventer, of course, being WWE champion. Um, months of animosity between CM Punk and Triple H would come to a head when they would have another disqualification match. Now, uh, CM Punk, of course, cut that iconic promo in June of 2011 about the company, um, and this rivalry, you know, would have I think it would have gone. It went on for like month, well months, weeks. Then it came to a head at this pay per view. Of course, other elements was involved, like Kevin Nash and whatnot. But uh, you know, I've always wanted to see these two have a singles match. I believe both are probably the two of the best wrestlers in the company. You know, years of experience. CM Punk. You know, like that. They've got years between them. I think it's nearly thirty years between them, and wrestling experience. So that's fantastic. You know, it's going to be a great match when. Especially, you know, the calibre of the abilities of both men. So, yeah, it was good to see this bow. Um, could have been better, I feel. The finish was a bit poor. It was the main event to the show. Um, a lot of people didn't like the finish, didn't like how Triple H didn't really let CM Punk go over him. Um, I tend to agree with that, but I have reasons to think not. Um, Triple H, of course, doesn't really, or hasn't really had many matches this year. And of course, he lost against Under against Undertaker at WrestleMania twenty twenty seven, and this was his second match of the year. Um, I believe he had another match later on, a tag match with Punk against Miz and um, Truth later on. But yeah, um, I think having a year with Triple H just losing for a full year, <laughs> particularly when he's got a bit of a you know swing around the place doesn't really need to happen. I believe Triple H needs to stay credible for a certain amount of time, you know. I mean, you, each year you have new fans getting introduced to the event, uh, to the WWE, and if this, like, a year's audience see Triple H, like, lose to Undertaker and lose to CM Punk, what credibility does he really have? So I believe he did need that win against CM Punk. Uh, that's my own personal preference. Uh, I do understand why people believe that CM Punk should have won that night. Um, we also had uh, Mark Henry um, when he, with his Hall of Pain. Very much in full throttle, uh, going against reigning world heavyweight champion Randy Orton. This was Mark Henry's, you know, shot at the big time. He would actually walk out with a title that night. Fantastic to see Mark Henry become champion finally. I believe he's done very well. I like his Hall of Pain. I believe Randy Orton did a very good job in getting this guy over. Um, I believe Mark Henry, um, in his few months of being champion, he's done an okay job. Uh, I believe he could have had better rivalries with better people like Sheamus, and Orton, because this kind of ended around this time. But um, after the Hell in a Cell, even. But they've gone with Big Show, a big rivalry with uh, Mark Henry. Um, I'm okay with that. But this is where it started. Well, this is where his reign as champion started at Night of Champions. We then have a fatal four way uh, Dolph Ziggler, Alex Riley, Jack Swagger, and John Morrison. Um, if you look at this now, as opposed to then, uh, Dolph Ziggler is obviously the most standout performer there um, like Morrison's left the company now Alex Riley barely gets on TV Jack Swagger's kind of a second fiddle to Dolph Ziggler so you know it's pretty much a given who's going to win that match you know 
At least I think it would have been. It, it, you know, it wasn't so much at the time, I believe a lot of people was hoping that um, Swagger could win, Morrison could win, and Ice could win. Not a, there wasn't a dead set um, win on that one, so you know you couldn't really predict who was going to win. So you know it's worth watching, guys. We've also got Cody Rhodes versus Ted DiBiase, two former members of Legacy, going at it for the Intercontinentals Championship. Quite a rivalry between them two. Uh, Miz and Truth would actually start the show against Air Boom in a tag team championship match. Starting some controversy, controversy there, being up referees and whatnot. Um, it would actually appear quite a few times in the show, so you know that's worth watching or watching out for. Kelly Kelly versus Beth Phoenix. Uh, Kelly Kelly and Beth Phoenix had somewhat of a program in the fall of um, 2011. This is one of their bouts here for the Divas title. Um, we have a great special feature on this Blu-ray with Triple H and CM Punk with a contract signing. There's also other great features on it too. Now the Blu-ray, as you can see, just Blu-ray disc, no uh, artwork on the outer sleeve. Um, I'm not going to rate this pay-per-view because you know there's many things that, that happened on it, and I don't believe it's fair to rate a pay-per-view which wasn't really up to scratch. Um, they didn't have Christian, Wade Barrett, Sheamus on the card, although there was a promo with these guys. Well, not Wade Barrett, but there was between Christian and Sheamus. You've also got a lot of special features, guys. Bear in mind, this is four and quarter hours long. So you're getting a lot of, like, you're getting over an hour of special features as well. We'll get the Monday Night Raw, the key moments of Monday Night Raw from the Raw before this, 12th of September 2011. Um, the John Cena, Bret Hart versus Del Rio and Ricardo Rodriguez matches on this. Triple H and CM Punk exchange words. That promo they did before the pay-per-view. We've also got the Cutting Edge Smackdown before this pay-per-view, as well as a few other matches, tag matches and whatnot. Del, Del Rio promo with John Cena. All features on this DVD. Blu-ray. So yeah, thanks for watching this today, guys. This review is for WWEDVDnews.com. Follow me on Twitter. Sub to my channel if you can. I do a lot more videos than this. And yeah, um, Night of Champions 2011. Peace.